Recently, I showed you how to make this mega menu. It has multi-level dropdowns, a mega menu with columns, images, and blog posts. And you can repurpose this for just about anything. That video was getting pretty long, so I didn't have time to make it responsive. You can see here that it's definitely not responsive. So if you didn't catch that first video, it'll be right here and in the description below. So let's make this thing responsive now. This is what it will look like. The first thing that we'll do is add a hamburger menu. And I'm going to reuse the hamburger menu that I did in another video as well. Links to that video are in all the places too. So we're going to go down here to the header. And right after the logo, I'm just going to paste this in here. So we're adding a div with a class of menu button. And then within that, a div with the class of menu button lines. So let's go over to our CSS. And this is the CSS from the previous video. So all the way at the bottom, let's add our new stuff. All right, so I'm just going to add a comment here, new stuffs. And then I'm going to paste the CSS from the hamburger menu video. I'll quickly just go through this. So we have menu button, and it's going to be position relative. Initially, it's going to display none. I'm going to change this to display flex so that you can see it. And then let's save that. So now you can see the hamburger menu right here after the logo. So on our menu button lines, we're using pseudo elements before and after to create the top and the bottom uh, horizontal lines. And then we have an animation here, which we're using a transform to rotate the lines into an X whenever we press it. Now, in order to do that, we do have to add some JavaScript, very little JavaScript. So let's go back up here and let's just change this back to none. All right, and then we're going to add a media query. So right here, I'm just going to add a comment, media queries. Comment that out. So we're going to say at media screen and max width, we'll say 970 pixels. So anything under 970, these following properties will apply. So we're going to target the menu button. We're going to make it display as flex. All right, we'll save that. And now it's back to this because the width of our window is 730 pixels. It's going to display. But if we make that grow, anything past 970, it disappears, right? So when we shrink the menu, we also want the rest of the uh, the links here to disappear. So let's work on that. So we're going to target the header and then the menu items. Within that, we're going to set the position to absolute and we're going to calculate the height. So we want the height to be 100 VH minus 100%. So 100% is the calculation of the height of the header. What we're telling it is we want the menu items to begin at the bottom of the header. Next, we'll set the width to 100%, but we're going to limit it by setting a max width of 350 pixels. We'll set the top to 100%. Again, that's going to bring it right below the header. We'll set the right to zero so that it's aligned to the right side of the header. Background is going to be this blue color. We'll set it to display block. Padding of one rim all around. Line height of three rim. Overflow on the y-axis will be auto, so that will allow us to scroll vertically. And initially, we're going to set the opacity to 0 and transform translate y negative 10 vh. So basically, we're just making it start slightly higher than it would, and we're going to transition it in. So we're going to set that transition of all of 0 0.3 seconds with an ease out. And lastly, we're going to set a z-index of negative 1, make sure that it's behind the header. So now the menu disappears. In order to get the menu to come back, we need to implement a little bit of JavaScript to make the menu appear. Before we do that, we're going to add one more class to CSS, and that's going to tell it what to do when we click the menu button. So we're going to target the menu items in the open class. So we don't have this class anywhere yet, uh, but we're going to add it through JavaScript. So what we want to do is set the opacity to 1, and set the transform translate y to zero, right? So we're going to add an open class to our menu items. We'll do that through JavaScript. So let's do that next. 
So first thing we'll do is we're going to go into our index.html and right above the title here, we're going to add a script. The source will be main.js and we're going to defer it so that it loads after the page loads. And then we'll go to our files and let's create a new file called main.js. All right, so we're, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a constant called menu button and that's going to target a query selector of dot menu button class. Next, we'll create another constant of menu items. So we're going to get our menu items class as well. Now we'll create our hamburger menu toggle. Here we're going to add an event listener to our menu button of click and then an arrow function within that. We'll add the class of open to our menu button. And we're also going to add the class of open to our menu items. So we'll save that. And now when we click on the hamburger menu, it should change into an X and our menu should appear. There we go. Clicking it again makes it disappear and goes back to a hamburger menu. Perfect. Now we need to do a little bit more styling on these list items. Let's go back to our CSS. So now we're going to target our menu items and the LIs within them. And we're going to set a margin on these of 15 pixels top and bottom and 10 pixels left and right. So now you can see there's a little bit more space here. Next, we'll target our menu items, li, and then the anchors. And we're going to set a padding on these of zero top and bottom, one rim left and right. We're going to set a display of block, and we're going to set the font size to 1.4 rim, a little bit larger. Save that. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now, when we have this mobile menu pulled up, when we tap on these, it's going to change to orange because we have a hover set to change these to orange. But when we actually tap on them, I'm not sure that we want it to remain orange. If we did that, it's going to look a little odd. So after this, we're going to add menu items, li, hover. And we're going to change the background color transparent. Now, when we click on these, we do get an indication that we've clicked, but it doesn't remain orange. All right, so now if we click on drop down menu, you can see that it's not working quite right. So let's fix that. Again, we're within our media query, so these changes are only applying when we're on a smaller window size. Let's target our drop down and our mega menus. Comment that out. All right, so we're going to target our menu items and then the drop down menu as well as menu items and the menu right, as well as the menu items mega menu. All right, we're gonna set the position on these to static with an opacity of one. We're gonna set the top to four rem. Visibility will be visible. Padding left will be one rem. Width of 100%. We're gonna set a max height initially of zero. We're gonna do a transform on the scale of Y, so the vertical scale, we're going to set to zero and then we're going to do a transform origin of top. So we want that scale transformation to begin and end at the top. We're going to set the overflow to hidden and a transition of all 0.3 seconds and ease. So now when we click on the drop down menu, nothing happens. So we need to add a couple of items to the HTML and a little bit more JavaScript. Let's go back into our HTML. Now for each item that can be clicked, to expand another menu, we're going to add the class of expand button. So this drop down menu is something that can be clicked to expand another menu. Now that menu that it can expand is this UL. So in the UL, we're going to add expandable. So let's go through here. We also have this item three, which is expandable. So we're going to add expand button there and we are able to expand its sibling so that's expandable and then we have our mega menu that's an expand button and it can expand this mega menu right here and then one more is our blog so let's go down to blog that is an expand button and it can expand this div here. 
expandable. All right, let's save that HTML. Now we need to add just a little bit more JavaScript. We're going to add one more const here of expand button. We're going to target our expand buttons. So we're going to use a query selector all to target all of those expand buttons. All right, then we'll have our mobile menu expand here. So we're going to loop over our expand button. We'll use a for each and then an arrow function for each button. For each button, we're going to add an event listener on click. And then within that arrow function, we're going to target that button and add a class list of open. So each time we tap on an expand button, the open class is going to be added to it. So now we can target that open class in our CSS. So let's go back into our CSS. We're going to target our expand button dot open with the sibling of expandable. And we're going to change the max height on that to 100% and the transform scale Y of one. So the plus symbol targets the next sibling of the previous selector. So expand button dot open and then expandable. If we go back to our HTML, expand button in JavaScript, we're going to add an open to this. And so its next sibling is expandable. So that's what we're targeting. So let's save this and see if it works. Now we click on this and then the drop down menu. And there we go. And you notice how it animated down. And that's because of the scale Y transformation. Again, with item three, when we click on that, it should expand down as well. We click on it again, it should go back up. Same with the drop down menu. Nice. Now, if we open up the mega menu, you're going to see that it's not going to look great. So we need to add some styles to the mega menu as well as the block. If we expand this down, I'm going to make a couple of more changes to the LI and the anchors within the expandables. So let's target expandable LI, and then we're going to set a margin on these of zero, bring them together a little bit more. And then the same thing of expandable li and then the anchor, we're going to set the font size on these to one rim. So a little bit smaller in these sub menus. That looks pretty good. All right, now on to the mega menu and the blog. So we'll say mega menu and then the content. We're going to set the grid template columns to auto. So right now it's set up to, for a four or three column layout. So if we set this to auto, then it's going to result in a single column layout. And we're going to add some padding. One rim top, one rim right, zero on the bottom, and one rim on the left. Then we're also going to target our mega menu, and then the content, and the columns. We're going to set the width on these to 100%. Padding on the top is going to be one rim. Margin on the bottom is going to be 0 0.5 rim. And then a border on the top, we're going to set to one pixel solid, and then this light blue color. All right, let's save that. And it's not working because I misspelled content. Always a misspelling. Content, content, save. Now it's looking good. Okay. So we have added this border in between each section. Now, when we're in a desktop view, it normally has these uh, borders on the left side. So we need to get rid of the left borders. We've added the top borders. I also don't want a top border on the very first item. So let's go ahead and target that. We're going to do the same thing here. So let me copy that. And instead of, we're going to add to this int child of one. So basically the first one, we want a border on the top of none. So we'll just say zero pixels. And that gets rid of the border on the very first one. We'll also target our content and then our column. And then the mega links. We're going to set the border left 
on these to zero pixels. Get rid of that left border. We're also going to set a padding on the left of one rim. Just move them over a little bit. Save that. All right, that's looking pretty good. One more thing. Let's go to our columns and then the mega links and then the li. And we're going to set the margin on these to zero. So that's looking pretty good. Let's go through the mega menu, the blog. All right, so now if we expand it, looks good. Go back down. And then we go back to the normal desktop view, and everything is still working just as it should. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. Like this video to help me out, and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.